We must remember that the Holy Spirit in certain sense inhabits everything and everyone in the universe, even unbelievers. So let me get this straight. Christians and non-Christians all have the Holy Spirit. Is that right? Not reading the Bible, not understanding how to read the Bible, not trying to exegete a text, which is to read something into the text, and in many cases, to make the text fantasy, to make it say something that, that was never even imagined in the writer or even the hearer of the text, that can be dangerous. And we see that with people who are thoroughly unqualified to be on YouTube or in someone's churches or anywhere teaching the Bible. That applies to a person like an Isaiah Saldivar, that applies to a person now, it looks like, maybe even a Dr. Sam Storms, who might have had some respect. But now, when you hear what he's stating, it calls into question whether we should even listen to what he said in the past on other things, even things that he may have been right about. In Isaiah Saldivar's or any of the people that are looking to do any and everything they can to try to prove that their deliverance ministry, that is them supposedly casting demons out of Christians, is biblical, they will even resort to taking a text, twisting a text, or believing something that is complete heresy. And what I'm going to play for you of him repeating and even agreeing with Dr. Sam Storms, if you don't see this as heresy, well, then also we would have to impugn your level of understanding. This cannot pass, and I would love to see if anyone is going to come out and rebuke him or if anyone's going to come out and, and just publicly disagree. I doubt that that would be the case, at least from folks in his camp, because, again, the issue is not what the Bible says for them. The issue is how can we make sure that you see us in the right light? And again, keep frequenting us, keep following us, keep subscribing to us and so forth. But the scriptures are clear and what he's going to say has no biblical basis. As a matter of fact, as he reads this, tell me if you can cite the scripture that he's referring to. The argument from 1 Corinthians 3 is based on the idea is getting good that a demon indwelling a Christian is a spatial and spiritual impossibility. As for the former, it's argued that there's not enough room, that being for a demon to indwell a Christian, for both the Holy Spirit and a demonic being to coexist in the same human body. He's already off to a bad start because no one is stating that the reason why a demon cannot inhabit a Christian is because there's not enough room. No one makes that argument. The reason for the demon not being able to inhabit a Christian is because the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit has now taken up residency in the heart of the believer. It's not that it's an issue of not being enough room. That's not the issue. The issue is, can this darkness dwell in a place that has now been claimed by the Lord and is now a temple of the Holy Spirit? Before I get to where he agrees that everybody, including unbelievers, non-Christians, that would also include Muslims, that would also include atheists, that would also include Buddhists, that would also include Satanists, that they also have the Holy Spirit. Before I get there, let's just listen to this argument and take it apart. It would be too crowded, but this is to think of spatial beings in physical terms. I would ask as I would as easily ask, how can the Holy Spirit and the human spirit both dwell in the same body? Wouldn't that be just as crowded? Mary Magdalene had seven demons inhabiting her. The gathering demoniac was inhabited by about 6,000 demons, enough at any rate to enter and destroy 2,000 pigs. And if the presence of the Holy Spirit crowds out, quote unquote, crowds out demons, then demons couldn't exist anywhere because the Holy Spirit exists everywhere. It's not that sin can't be on earth. It's not that unholy demons can't be on earth. Uh, even though the Lord's Spirit prevails all over the earth, that's not the point. The point is that in a holy temple, or in this case, a vessel that's been set aside and has the spirit inside of us. Because remember, that's been the issue all along. Men walking around on this planet, not having the Holy Spirit in them that compels them to come closer to Christ. That's been the issue. And God has promised that that is what's going to happen. And when it does, there is no more fellowship with light and darkness. Did you guys just see that? What he just said here? Look at this. What if the presence of the Holy Spirit crowds out demons, then demons couldn't exist anywhere because the Holy Spirit exists everywhere. That's powerful because people say, well, how could a demon and, and the Holy Spirit dwell in the same place? Well, friend, the Holy Spirit dwells everywhere. How could a demon dwell anywhere if that's the case? If that's the case, poor logic, 
How could a demon dwell anywhere? That's a good point there. Some of y'all should use that argument. The difference of the presence of the Lord being somewhere versus being in something is two totally different things. The presence of the Lord being before someone or someone being before the presence of the Lord or that spirit of the Lord also being in someone is a completely different thing. The second argument is that this would be a spiritual impossibility. That is to say, how can the Holy Spirit inhabit the same body with an unholy demon? But again, we must remember that the Holy Spirit in certain sense inhabits everything and everyone in the universe, even unbelievers. Of course, in the case of the latter, he does not indwell them in a saving or sanctifying way. Now, you heard that. That's him saying, now he's reading from Sam Storm, but he's in agreement. He says, in a sense, the Holy Spirit is in everyone else as well. Is that true? Let's listen to him again. Let's make sure that I'm not taking him out of context. You've heard what he said previously, and let's think about this. That is to say, how can the Holy Spirit inhabit the same body with an unholy demon? But again, we must remember that the Holy Spirit in certain sense inhabits everything and everyone in the universe, even unbelievers. Of course, in the case of the latter, he does not indwell them in a saving or sanctifying way. The Holy Spirit does not even in a sense inhabit everything and everyone again. That would mean that the Holy Spirit inhabits the non-believer. The Holy Spirit inhabits the Satanists. The Holy Spirit inhabits Muslims. The Holy Spirit inhabits Buddhists. The Holy Spirit inhabits atheists. The Holy Spirit inhabits this camera. The Holy Spirit inhabits my computer. The Holy Spirit inhabits my cat. The Holy Spirit inhabits my dog. That is not true. That's borderline, if not outright, pantheism. That is complete heresy. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit coming in the first place if he's already in everyone? Jesus makes this point about the coming Holy Spirit to dwell in us. It's been prophesied all throughout the Old Testament. We see it in Jeremiah, we see it in Ezekiel, we see it in Deuteronomy, we see it in Hosea, we see it in a lot of different places in the Old Testament. And then Jesus speaks specifically on this to the disciples as well in John 14, 15, and 16. In John 14, he says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all that I said to you. But not just in chapter 14, he, he iterates it again in chapter 15, verse 26. He says the same. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes, when he comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me and he will testify also because you have been with me from the beginning. And so he's not saying that you already have him. He says that you will have him. He will come. The identifying mark of every believer and only believers is that we have been baptized into the Holy Spirit. We all have the Holy Spirit in us. According to Romans chapter 12, verse 13, Paul lets, makes it clear that all believers, all Christians have the Holy Spirit. But maybe if listening to them, maybe we should say that everyone has the Holy Spirit, including non-believers. This, this seems to be a heresy to me. If I'm wrong, I would love for someone to point out the scriptures that tell me differently. The Holy Spirit is, after all, omnipresent. Okay, so again, this idea, how could a demon and the Holy Spirit be in the same place? Completely unbased. What are you talking about? The Holy Spirit's everywhere. So this is him not just reading Sam Storm's writings, but also in agreement and then giving his own analogy. He is in complete agreement. Now, I don't know if he necessarily knows what he's saying. Maybe he's just going along with it because it helps him to make his point that demons can be inside of Christians, which helps him to bolster his point that you can cast out demons, which is all he seems to do, is cast out demons out of Christians. But again, I'm still waiting for the text, the scripture that they point to. That's like saying the Holy Spirit can't come to a club because there's demons in the club. What do you even mean? Of course the Holy Spirit can dwell where there's demons. The Holy Spirit, after all, is omnipresent. He, I hope some of y'all are getting set free here. Some of you just, you will never be convinced, so you can just continue to uh, live however you want to live. But there's some of you that are actually here for truth, and you want to be convinced, and you're, and you're interested in this stuff. Which is rich, because if you want truth, then why not go to the scriptures? Why not lean to what the scriptures say, but you just simply don't? Again, tell me if you've heard the scripture. I, maybe I've missed it, but so far I have not heard the scripture. And I'll go ahead and provide a link to the actual article so that you can read it for yourself and see, does he cover this? No. And every time that Sam Storms mentions anyone having a demon in them that's going to be cast out of them. None of those people, none of those examples are someone who has the Holy Spirit in them. Not one, which is an argument they cannot make unless they write another scripture or unless they twist the scriptures even more so. He dwells everywhere. And again, this is not me. This is Sam Storms. So this is his writings. And though it's Sam Storms writings, you concur. 
you're adding your own analogies to it to bolster the point. And you're saying that people who understand this will be set free. No, you are deceiving people, whether you do it intentionally or unintentionally. I'm starting to believe that it's probably more intentional, but it's still you promoting a heresy. You may also recall from the book that, uh, you may also recall from the book of Job that Satan had access to the presence of God indicating that the issue is not of spatial proximity, but of personal relationship. The Holy Spirit and demons are in close proximity when outside of the human body. So why would they not be in close proximity while inside the human body? Finally, the Holy Spirit indwells the Christian, even though even I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit indwells the Christian, even though the latter still has a sinful nature or a sinful flesh. In other words, if the Holy Spirit can inhabit the same body with an unholy human sin, why could he not inhabit the same body of someone with an unholy demon? There's two points about what he just made. First, how in the world does a person who claims to have the Holy Spirit, who claims to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, not recognize or not defend the power of the Holy Spirit in someone? Clearly, all of us who have the Holy Spirit in us, all of us who are truly saved, know that the Holy Spirit in us, there is a difference. He causes something different. The life that we have prior to the Holy Spirit, our walking, our talking, our thoughts prior to the Holy Spirit is vastly different than after receiving the Holy Spirit. That just cannot be overstated, guys, nor could it be overlooked. The fact that he or anyone else would undermine the actual power of the Holy Spirit. Why would someone claim to know the power of the Holy Spirit, yet dismiss the power of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life? That's the main reason why a demon cannot dwell in the same life inside of a believer because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And then secondly, one of the problems that people come up with or, th or don't think this through is that because you sin, your sin is not a result of a demonic influence. Now, can a demonic influence kind of exacerbate it? Sure, without question, especially if you're not a Christian. But even if Christians um, have the Holy Spirit, and can they still sin? Well, sure, because what's causing the sin isn't a demon. What's causing them to sin is the flesh. Think about it. The very first two people on the planet to sin, to err or depart from what God's word was, was Adam and Eve. They did not have a demon in them. Now, they did have a demon speaking to them, namely the devil, but they were not demonically possessed. What he did was distort the word of God, which we see here, and also what we see are them appealing to their own desires. Adam and Eve didn't sin because they were demonized or possessed or oppressed. They sinned because they simply wanted to. It's the flesh. Remember what the Bible says about the flesh. In Galatians 5, 16, he says, but I say, walk in the spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Notice he's not saying the desire or the whims or the unction of a demon, but the desires of the flesh. He says, for the flesh sets its desires against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, for these are in opposition of one another, so that you may not do the things that you please, that you please, and so that if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, and I won't cover those deeds because you can just remember yourself, but it's not saying the things of a demon. These aren't the desires or the whims or wishes of a demon. This is the desire of the flesh. Again, we have this flesh, and there are certain things that we want to gratify in the flesh. But if we are being led by the Spirit, which we have the Holy Spirit in us, then we should not do those things. The difference is the person who has the Spirit will be led by the Spirit versus the person who does not have the Spirit. Again, that goes counter to this new thought from these people that everyone, including unbelievers, has the Spirit. Well, then they can also be led by the Spirit by that same logic. It strikes me that the force of this argument appears to be a more emotional than biblical. Thank you, Sam Storms. When are you going to be on the podcast? It strikes me that the force of this argument appears to be more emotional than biblical. People always emotionally react. Pastors get emotional. Oh, how could a demon dwell in the same? It's like, first of all, you've never even cast out a dev devil in your life. So how do you know what anything about demons? Second of all, you're look, you're thinking physical, spatial, again, spatial consciousness. You're not thinking of eternal spiritual dimensions. We're, we're talking about an unseen realm that has no space. How could the demon and the Holy Spirit be in the same area? We're not talking about spatial. We're not talking about your bedroom. Okay, so it's an emotional response, not a biblical response. Again, they go back to this argument that you've never cast out a demon in life. They never have as well. But then again, again, I will take in place 
uh, myself as well as hundreds of other men of God who have shared the gospel and seen people delivered compared to theirs. But more to the point, you stated that this is an emotional argument and not one that's based in the scripture, yet and still you did not give an actual scripture. There is no biblical basis. And yet what he'll do is he'll cause his audience to agree with him, not reading, not thinking that this is indeed, in fact, what they're saying, a biblical argument, though there's no recitation of a biblical verse. It is that side that is more emotional and not biblical. Again, this is complete heresy. This is wrong. And someone's going to say, why are you always bringing up what this person is saying or what others like him are saying? Because they keep bringing up these heresies. They keep doing things to harm the body. When you sin, it's not the result of a demon. It is the result of your flesh. How do you bring that under control? How do you want to have, how do you have peace if you indeed want to have peace? Do you want to have peace? Do you want to be made whole? Well, then the first step is to go to the actual deliverer and then watch him set you free. Whom the son sets free. Guess what, guys? Jesus said it. He meant it. You are free indeed, without question, thoroughly, completely. And it's continuous according to the tense of the verb that's used there. And so to say otherwise, one would be a lie. But then also to say that other people have the exact same thing as you. Notice what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He says, do not be bound together with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness or what harmony has Christ with Belial or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever. Well, according to Isaiah, according to Sam Storms, a believer has everything in common with an unbeliever. We have the same Holy Spirit. But according to Paul, that's not true. For what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from, amid, from the midst of them and be separate. But according to them, this also applies to an unbeliever. They may not say that applies to them, but when you make the statement that the, uh, that the unbeliever also has the Holy Spirit in them, just not in a sanctifying fashion, well, what is the Holy Spirit doing in them then? Is, he's just, is he sitting there uh, impotent? Is the Holy Spirit in the unbeliever, in the Satanist, in the atheist? Is he sitting there just taking pictures? No. The reason for the Holy Spirit comes in us is to cause us to move and to keep the commands of the Lord. According to the prophecies from, from Jeremiah, from Ezekiel, from Deuteronomy, from Moses. So my friends, do yourself a favor. Do not listen to people who can, one, cannot back things up with scripture, but two, have a point to prove and to do so to the detriment of the people that listen to them. These people are not interested in someone being delivered because if they were, then everyone around them would be delivered. But what we see are people who have no idea or control of the scriptures. Now, if I have, if I'm wrong and there is a passage that tells us or passages that tells us that the Holy Spirit is in everything and the Holy Spirit is in everyone, including the Muslim, including, including the Satanist, well then I'd be willing to listen. But until then, I have no other choice but to assume that these people who are promoting heresies and do so gladly, I've got to put them in the category of a heretic.